God has been so gracious and good to us as people in, in making us part of a family. When you're born, you know, you're born into a family. And then when you're born of God, you're born into the family of God, the body of Christ. And one of the axioms of being part of the body of Christ and part of a family is that, that family members help each other. And we really do need to help each other and, and learn to take advice from each other. And this is especially true in our modern culture in which sometimes we, we can try to become so independent. I don't think this was as true in the biblical world as it is today because in the biblical world you, you really knew. I mean, there were so many things in your life that just required teamwork that you really knew you needed other people and you needed the family to survive. Today, you know, you, you build one wall with your job and another wall with your finances and your retirement funds and your this and your that. And pretty soon, boy, you just get to where I'm, I'm independent. I can do this myself. And then there gets to be a resistance to asking people for help or even thinking in terms of working together seamlessly with other members of the body and the family to get help. And this can be very troublesome, very hurtful when we as individuals get caught up in some kind of sin or trespass or fault. And there's a really, really powerful verse in Ecclesiastes about this that I, I think we need to read and kind of meditate on, think about a little bit to see what God's really saying here. It's Ecclesiastes 8.8. 8. And when we read this verse, here's what it says. No man has power over the wind to contain it. Well, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> you can't grab the wind. Can't even get a good handful of it, actually. And then he says, so no one has power over the day of his death. And then the last half of the verse goes on to say, as no one is discharged in the time of war, so wickedness will not release those who practice it. What a powerful verse and one to really think about and meditate on. Wickedness will not release those who practice it. It is the nature of wickedness to become so a part of, of what you do and how you think that it, it's very, very difficult to break out. If you talk to, say, for example, a drug addict or, or an alcoholic, most people who have broken out of that kind of wickedness have done so with the help of friends. There are very, very few people who are really hardcore drug addicts or really hardcore alcoholics, for example, or maybe sex addicts. Maybe they're, they're completely addicted to pornography or something like that, that, that all of a sudden just wake up one morning and say, I'm not gonna do that anymore, and they just quit, and they can. I mean, even smokers, people who smoke, and that's not even necessarily a sin. You know, I know it's not good for your body, but neither is drinking a Coca-Cola, frankly. Um, with all the sugar and stuff in it. Um, you know, even, even people like that know how hard it is to, to quit on their own. What a, what a great verse. Wickedness will not release those who practice it. Maybe you're addicted to video games. Maybe you're just addicted to being a couch potato. It, it, not that, you know, watching a couple hours of TV isn't wickedness, but if you're throwing your life away to TV, I tell you, that's, that's, that's in, in God's sight, what a waste. Wickedness will not release those who practice it. We should wake up, say, okay, this is going to mean number two, one, one of two things. Either maybe I'm caught in some kind of wickedness. And if, it's, if the wickedness isn't going to release me, what do I need? I need help. Or I'm going to know someone who's caught in wickedness. And, 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 and they're not going to be able to get out on their own. You know, so many times, one of the traps of Christianity is we become so good at spotting wickedness. Look, I see wickedness over there. You know, we're, we're so good at spotting wickedness. And then, boy, we can add gossip to that. And when we can talk about the wickedness we see in others. <laughs> you know, it's easy to spot wickedness. I mean, frankly, wickedness is not that hard to spot. You know, <laughs> it's, it's pretty easy to spot wickedness and sin. And it's real easy to talk about it. What's hard is to help people that are caught up in it. Or if we're caught up in it ourselves, we need help. And, and Christians, we Christians need to change our attitude about wickedness. Wickedness is just part of the fallen nature of the world. It, it doesn't have to be in anybody's particular, any particular person's life, 
but it's in lots of people's lives and we need to be able to help people. We need to become professionals at number one, getting out of any wickedness that's in us. And number two, helping other people get out of wickedness. Absolutely. And, and as I started to say in the, early on in the tape about us being self-sufficient, there's a resistance we have kind of a natural resistance, it seems, to getting help. No, I can do this myself. <laughs> Wickedness won't release those who practice it. We need help. Look at uh, earlier on in Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 to 13. This, interestingly enough, this is often spoken in weddings. But it, it also helps in, in counseling situations. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up, but pity the man who falls and has no one to help him up. You see, wickedness won't release those who practice it. You need somebody else to help you get up and out. If two lie down together, they'll keep warm, but how, how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, yeah, no kidding, by wickedness. Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. In a cord of three strands, and that's weaving God in with you and your friend, that's not quickly broken. And then it says, better a poor but wise youth than an old and foolish king who lo no longer knows how to take warning. Take warning from who? From advisors. You see, that it better to be a, just a youth and be wise and learn, hey, I need to listen to other people. You and I. If we're really going to take on the world, if we're really going to be godly, we need help. And we need to know when to get help, and we need to cultivate friendships. Cultivate those friendships so that we have people who will help. Boy, listen to Proverbs chapter 27, verse 9. It says, Perfume and incense bring joy to the heart, and the pleasantness of one's friend springs from his earnest counsel. See, a friend is somebody who really speaks honestly and earnestly. Here, the pleasantness of one's friend comes from an, his earnest counsel. And when your friends speak honestly, openly to you, oh, that's such a gift. Because so many people are willing to point out the wickedness. I see wickedness. But not really hang in for the fight. And then there's other people that they feel the wickedness. They know they're entrapped. They know they're stuck. You know, it doesn't matter what you're stuck in, but, but you know you're stuck. Drugs, alcohol, pornography, video games, couch potatoing it. Maybe you're, just, maybe you're just consumed by one particular hobby or whatever. You don't seem to have any time for God. It doesn't really matter. If there's wickedness and you're, and you're stuck in it, you're stuck. And we've got to recognize that. And then a friend is someone who will speak to us and, and help us come up and out. Proverbs 15, 22, plans fail for lack of counsel. Do, do you have a plan to be a, a good, productive Christian? Are you stuck? It says they fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors they succeed. You and I need friends that we can go to that help us to succeed in life. Sometimes those friends are professionals. Sometimes they're paid friends, if you will. You know, a, a doctor is a man who studies, or a woman, man or woman who studies for years to be able to help us with physical ailments. Sometimes we get stuck in our mind, and there are professionals who, are, who have been paid and trained to be able to know how to help us get out of some of the things we're in. Proverbs 27, 6, wounds from a friend can be trusted. Man, sometimes it hurts to have somebody tell you what's really going on, but the scripture will say, if that person's a friend, wounds from the friend can be trusted. You and I need to be flat honest about the fact that the Bible is true and wickedness will not release those who practice it. We aren't going to be caught in wickedness and one day all of a sudden get enough strength that we're going to break free. We need help. If I'm caught in wickedness, if you're caught in wickedness, let's believe the Word of God and let's find some friends and some counselors. Let's get help, get up, get out, and get moving forward for God. God bless you.